All right, sweet. So uh, my name is Justin, and uh, I work on Bitbucket and SourceTree at Atlassian, uh, which is Atlassian's free DVCS code hosting site. Uh, and what I want to talk to you guys about is, is the way that I think that uh, code review is changing with uh, the adoption of DVCS in the enterprise. Uh, and you know, can I just get a show of hands for how many people have actually done a pull request before? Oh wow, it's quite a few. Uh, so this, this presentation will be a little bit more for the, the people that have never done a pull request, and I kind of want to walk people through what it's like to actually issue a pull request and how Atlassian is adopting pull requests as a, a lightweight model to do code reviews uh, for branch-based feature development. So if, uh, if you're anything like most of our development teams at Atlassian, what we do is, is we, we do most of our work on our primary branch. And uh, we've generally avoided uh, doing any type of branch-based development because merging that code back into the main line generally is, is a pain in the ass. So uh, what ends up happening is, is you go and you do a bunch of work, and then when it's time to merge back into the main branch, that's when the real difficulty starts to occur. And so uh, you know, it, it, it's a really frustrating experience. And you know, the poor bastard that has to do this ends up spending a week trying to keep the branch and the main line of development uh, organized together. Well, with DVCS is a new way of doing merging, uh, and, and that's pull request. And, and the reason that I'm really excited about pull request as code review is because it fundamentally changes the way that we've been doing pull, uh, code reviews uh, up, to, up till now. And, and if, you, if you take the subversion model, you end up committing to the main line of development and conducting your code review sort of after the code has already poisoned the tree, so to speak. Now with pull requests, what ends up happening is, because all of the feature development is being done on individual branches, before the code is merged into the main line of development, you actually conduct your code review there and make any changes that are necessary before the code is brought back into the, the, the main line of development. And I think that the, the easiest way to sort of understand this is to walk through what a pull request is like on Bitbucket. And so on Bitbucket, what you have is, is when you want to issue a pull request, you, you, you encounter this screen for the first time, right? And on this screen, what you'll see is, is, is we have a source and we have a destination. And you know, there's two models to doing pull requests. You can either say, look, I'm, I'm going to clone this repository and make a fork of it, and I want you to pull the changes in between my fork uh, and the primary uh, repository. Or you can issue pull requests between branches, which is the model that I think that most of us are going to end up adopting in the enterprise. And so here you can see that I'm picking the, uh, the staging static hosting branch. And what we want to do from the staging uh, repo is merge that code into the production default branch. You go ahead, you'll enter some details about this pull request, and then when you click Submit, when en what ends up happening is, is your pull request gets added to a list of outstanding pull requests. Now, anybody that has write access to that repository on Bitbucket will end up receiving a notification that says, hey, you know what? Come and look at this code that I've submitted. I want you to comment on it, and I want you to merge this code in from the branch to the main development. And so uh, here you can see we have a bunch of outstanding pull requests, and we have this little chat icon. And you can see that at any given time on Bitbucket, we have dozens of open pull requests as developers are working on various features. And if you remember from Scott's presentation this morning, the Confluence team is doing a, a, a branch per actual JIRA issue that they work on. Uh, on the Bitbucket team, we, we sort of follow that a little bit. Uh, you can see BB. 4337 at the top. Uh, that's a specific pull request related to a, a, a JIRA issue on our team. And so when you go ahead and you click on one of these pull requests, this is the screen that you end up seeing. You see the details about where the uh, pull request is coming from and where it wants to end up. You can see the description here. And then you can start to see some conversation that is occurring about the code change that's being asked to be merged. If you scroll down a little bit on the screen, what you can see here is you can see all of the chain sets that are related to this particular pull request. In this example, David has uh, six different chain sets that he would like pulled into the uh, main branch of development for Bitbucket. And you can see all the files that were changed along with the number of uh, lines that were added or removed. A little bit farther down on the pull request, we offer uh, a diff. And you know, uh, we have two types of diff. We have this version of the diff, where it allows you to see uh, which files were removed and added uh, 
in, in sort of a simplistic approach. But we added this new feature called side-by-side -side diff uh, a couple months ago as part of a 20% innovation project at Atlassian. And what this does is it allows you to view the diff in an IDE style way. And I think that this is one of the uh, nice things that really sets pull requests aside on Bitbucket. So you've looked at the code, you've, you've decided that you want some changes made, or maybe you have a suggestion for David uh, to do something different. Well, what you can do is, is you can go and you can leave a comment, right? And we support uh, basic markup in leaving comments, so it's really easy for you to format uh, nice looking messages. And you can go ahead and submit your comment. And what ends up happening is, as you can see, we use commenting quite a bit in order to talk about our pull request on Bitbucket. This is a thread that went on for a while, and you can see that uh, you know Nicholas made a comment about why does why does this look like this? Eric says, you know what, that's a really good catch. There's a bug, and then he says, you know what, we went ahead and fixed it, and we updated the pull request. Well, what does he mean when he says I updated the pull request? Well. At any given time on a pull request, you can, you can go back and you can edit your existing pull request. And what you can do by that is, is you can add additional commits to the pull request. And then that allows you to uh, uh, incorporate changes that are necessary. And in future versions of uh, pull requests, what we're going to do is, is we're going to add line by line commenting so that it's easier for you to figure out exactly which lines uh, need to be updated and, uh, uh, and pulled into the pull request. And so uh, you can also have the option to reject the pull request outright. Uh, you know, probably uh, sort of a rude thing to do, but uh, you know, it happens. Uh, another option is, is you can accept and merge. And what, what, what does that mean? Well, because merging is so easy with, pull uh, with DVCS, we've built in the ability for you, when you accept this pull request, it will automatically take the code uh, and all of the chain sets that are either on your branch or on your fork and apply those to the main line of development or whatever the destination was. And the next time that somebody uh, downloads that code, uh, it will have all of those changes automatically integrated into your main repository. There's no command line operations that you have to run. It's all facilitated entirely through the user interface. And so uh, what does it look like once you end up accepting? This is my favorite green little bar on Bitbucket. We've got a lot of them, but uh, this is the one that I like the most. And in here you can say that this pull request has been accepted, uh, and then you know that the, the code was pulled into the main line of development. And, you know, here's another example. Uh, the JIRA team is using this to work on the JIRA Bitbucket connector that integrates JIRA and Bitbucket. In future versions of pull requests, we're going to provide an even tighter integration with JIRA uh, in the on-demand platform and behind the firewall. You'll be able to look uh, from the commits tab inside of JIRA and see which pull requests are outstanding. Has this code been merged into the mainline development? And even start to view that activity inside of your uh, activity stream. And so uh, for those of you that uh, haven't ever uh, conducted a pull request before, what I would do is I would encourage you to go check out bitbucket.org. Uh, it's free for anybody to get started. You can have an unlimited number of private repositories, uh, and you can start uh, issuing your own pull request. In fact, uh, Mary, who works on our documentation, has uh, made a series of videos and instructional texts that will walk you through creating your own first repository and issuing a pull request against uh, an open uh, repository on Bitbucket. And so uh, again, I would encourage everybody to check that out, and uh, thanks for hearing our lightning talk on uh, pull requests.